When you're getting started with a reef tank, there's a lot of information that comes at you fast. You have to worry about pH, food, coral food, amino acids, a skimmer, and you know, thousands of kinds of skimmers, so which one? Lighting, LEDs, T5s, metal halides, natural sunlight, solar tubes? The options are endless, and you can be successful with billions of potential combinations of equipment and technique. Your reef tank is going to be as unique as you, but that doesn't mean that some research won't help you be successful. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this week we're going to do a beginner's guide on reef tank lighting. And if you're in a rush, well, you know, just buy any well-rated reef-oriented commercial light. Don't just get it at Home Depot, get it at Bulk Reef Supply, your local fish store, something like that. Run it 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Whatever the coral growth mode it's got, it'll work. Done. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got more time, then reef lighting really can be that simple at its core. Modern lighting fixtures like those from AI, Orphic, Ecotech Marine, Kessel, and others all come with basic settings that are going to work really well on most reef tanks. Note, all those vendors are making LED lights. And yes, for a beginner, I would recommend using an LED light over your reef tank. They're more common, more people work with them now. There are other lighting options that you have. Myself, I started out with metal halide lights a couple decades ago. They work really well. They're the gold standard for reef lights, but they use a lot of electricity and they get very hot. Metal halide lights are not programmable or customizable like an LED or maybe even a T5 light is. And the only choice you really have is going to be the overall wattage and what bulb you're going to use. Different metal halide bulbs put out different spectra of light. That's just different color of light. From researching for this video, in coral growth tests, it seems like about 14K and above, 14 and 20,000, is going to produce the most growth for Acropora. Now that's mostly a white light with a little bit of a blue tint to it. And a really common metal halide bulb that you might buy in a 14K model is made by Phoenix. Oftentimes, LED manufacturers are going to have a program that uses a color temperature around 14K as well. It could be called AB Plus or Coral Growth or maybe even Phoenix. A 20K light, that's 20,000 Kelvin light, that's a much more blue light. It's also produced good Acropora growth in the study and might make your tank a bit more colorful. But really, as long as you're mostly towards the blue end of the light spectrum, your reef tank is going to do well for you. There is another lighting technology that's out there which is really common and it's called T5. T5 are thin fluorescent tubes that come in a variety of colors. If you particularly like mixing different colors, different bulbs, you'll be able to get exactly the light that you want. And a T5 fixture, like ones made by ATI and other companies like that, can't be beat if you like that kind of thing. As you buy the individual bulbs that are going to go into it, you can mix and match the different bulbs to get the overall color you want. T5s have a really even spread of color throughout the tank, which helps prevent shadows and things like that, which can plague Acropora as their branches grow and shade other parts of the coral. Metal halide lights and for sure LED lights tend to produce varying degrees of disco ball effect in your tank. Particularly if you're using a light like a Kessel pendant, which is a single source point of light, you're going to see this in your tank. Some people really like the disco ball effect. Some people hate it. It is something to be aware of though, if you're shopping for a really small pendant style light. When you first add corals to your tank, you might want to reduce the output of your lights somewhat. A nine week acclimation period for new Acropora reduced deaths by about 50% in a study that I saw. You can reduce the overall time that your lights run, or if your lights are dimmable like most LEDs, then you can simply turn them down for a few weeks and then ramp them back up slowly to their normal setting. PAR, photosynthetically active radiation, is actually what matters to the coral. Most coral that we keep in our aquariums gets a lot of its food and nutrients from tiny microscopic things called dinoflagellates that live in their tissue. And those little critters are going to use light to make their food just like a plant would. You probably won't have any way to measure PAR if you're just starting out in the hobby, but you can look at charts online and you'll want somewhere around 250 to 300 or more for most stony corals like Acropora. Soft corals, zoanthids, zinnia, things like that can do well with much lower levels of light. So keep that in mind if you don't want to buy such an expensive light right off the bat. 
Lighting is one of those things that you need to get right in a reef tank. It is the source of a lot of the energy that the animals that we put in a reef tank need to survive. Thankfully, in general, it's pretty easy to get a good light these days due to the huge number of really high quality fixtures put out by all the different vendors like the ones I've mentioned in this video. You're also already doing this, so keep up and do research and you'll be well on your way to an awesome reef tank. Thanks for watching. Take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already. I do like to put that only at the end of my videos and not be so annoying about it. So, um, you know, hit that subscribe button and have a great day. Bye.